Hi, I'm Charmaine James, and I have Dr. Lewis here with me, and we're going to talk about Hawk injections, when and if, and how often you should do them. What do you think, Doc? Do them, do them when they need to be done. That's the, the short answer. Um, I'm not scared to do them. I, I, I'm not scared to recommend people doing them. If you get a horse to the point that they, they need that to compete. I feel like there's a lot of people who just are on a time schedule of go and do it every three months. Um, yeah. What do you say about that? Well, I've never, I've never advised people that way. Uh, I think you need to do that on an as-needed basis. Uh, is my own opinion. Uh, and I know for practical reasons, people get on the road and they're not around the veterinarian they normally use, and so they, not sure what to do. You know, they're in another state or whatever. And I don't, uh, you know, I, I, I don't criticize them for that. But you know, the best care is is the guy who's, or the veterinarian, or he or she who's, who's taking care of that horse, uh, has a chance to see that horse off and on. And it's not only the exam you do, <clears throat> but it's how the horse is, is competing, how the horse is performing for the right. owner. Right. You know, it's what you go by. And, uh, you know, the other avenues, uh, some of the anti-inflammatory drugs you use systemically, sometimes that's all you need on a horse uh, at times. Uh, I, I, I'm old school and I tend to be conservative about injecting joints, I guess is what I'm saying. But if a horse gets to a point where it's not performing well and you know that's what it is, then that's the most direct thing you can do to, to get a horse back going. You know, when I was traveling a lot and if I had to inject a horse um, and I could give him some time off, what's the ideal time to leave off after an injection? Uh, the sore they are, uh, the more time you should give them in general. Uh, there are a lot of different products out there, but the, the sodium hyaluronate products, as a rule, uh, I recommend 48 hours off minimum on those, and there's a reason why. And that's because some of those drugs can cause a, a mild uh, inflammatory reaction in the joint, and you want to let them have time for that to subside before you get back on the horse and use them. That's the main reason I give them that time off. All right. Um, and so many people are afraid to inject that if their horse gets sore and they, uh, oh, if I inject them this one time, I'm going to have to keep doing it. That's not always the case, is it? No, it's not. It's not. Uh, some of the, where that came from, some of the older products that we used to use, some of, some of the steroid, uh, cortisone products were pretty hard on cartilage. Uh, and if you started injecting hocks with those things, well, you would, have a joint that wouldn't need it after that. I mean, you, uh, literally, they they may have had enough deleterious effect on cartilage that you started exacerbated a problem. Although you were able to use them, we have better products than that today. And uh, so, no, I, I don't think you know. Uh, on a hawk, you have to remember most. You have two two potentials on a hawk. The way I look at it, and I'm talking about the lower joints of the hawk, which is what people. Are most commonly injecting. You can have that one-time injury, which I see those occasionally. It'd be just one hock that's sore on the horse. He's been fine. He came up sore. Well, that's a sprain. Right. Uh, part of your treatment may be injecting that horse, mm -hmm. particularly if somebody needs to go on with him. But that doesn't mean he won't get over that. I've had horses like that that we injected one time and you never saw them for another couple of years. Never had any more trouble versus the horse is starting to get some wear and tear. And most of those are gonna have problems bilaterally in both legs to some degree, maybe one worse than the other, but they'll usually have it in both. And those are the ones that if, if you get to a point they're sore enough that you have to inject them, the chances are you're gonna have to do that again. And the reason why is because they're starting to get really in short terms low grade arthritis. It's just wear and tear. Doesn't mean a horse is through. A lot of those horses go years like that and get a lot of use out of them. But sooner or later, you know, it's probably going to stop them, you know, those kind of cases. Right. Uh, and there's, that's another subject to get into, when, what you do with those horses from that point on. But, but uh, versus a one-time injury may not need, need to be injected, but one time. Right. See, so. I've always wondered, you know, people think, well, my horse was sore in the hocks. I go get him injected. I always wondered, do they really work? Because I hear people getting a shoulder injected and it didn't help them. So I wonder if that's the case sometimes in the hawks. Well, it can be that way in any joint. You know, I'm 
personally proof of that. I've had two shoulders that uh, had a lot of cortisone in them. It didn't help. Surgery finally did. But in, in uh, hock injections in horses, most of the time you'll get pretty good relief out of it. If I get a horse that I think sore in hocks and I inject them and he doesn't respond, I begin to think I've overlooked something. Something else is there. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah. Okay. Those, those are low range of motion joints. Those tend to respond a little better versus comparing it to say a, a stifle that's been injured and you inject that stifle and don't get much response. Well, there's, it's a more complex joint and there can be some things there besides inflammation that cause pain that so you can't cover up with a joint injection versus hocks. It's usually uh, joint pain, synovitis that, that's causing it and, and they respond pretty well to injections. So. Okay, great. Thanks. Sure. All right.